Let's practice using Ampere's law in a case with symmetry to calculate the B, the magnetic field of a long straight wire. We did it with the Bios of our law. Let's go ahead and also do it with Ampere's law. Make sure we get the same thing. So here is the wire in cross section. It has a radius A and current I. So now I'm going to draw it going away from you with some perspective to make it all, oops, make it pretty like that, kind of going like that. Okay, so the current I flowing down the wire. We want to actually calculate it, uh, the B field inside and outside. So let's think of this now. Let's imagine our coordinate system is here, our origin is here, and we want to go out in radius, and we want to draw our Amperian loops, is what they're called, in some real symmetric way. So we want to center, center them on the same axis as the wire, like that. So that would be one Amperian loop we want to consider because it's symmetric. And keep in mind, in Ampere's law, they are loops. This is not a surface. This isn't a 2D representation of some surface cylinder. It's just a loop. I could draw it anywhere in the wire. I'm drawing it here because you can see it there. Okay? So that would be one. That would be the loop where R, the radius of that loop, is less than the radius of the wire. All right? That's actually inside the wire. Can we calculate the B field inside the wire? Yes, we can. We're going to. OK. Another one we might draw would be outside the uh, wire, something like that. It would have a larger radius. It would be the radius greater than A. So this is outside. Both of these Ampere loops you can see are penetrated by some current. So it makes sense. We have a loop, current going through, we have a B field. It makes sense to use Ampere's law. It's actually easier to do the outside first. Okay, so let's do the, this loop. Okay, the integral of b dot ds as we go around. So now let's pick a point right here, say, and draw our ds. And what we know due to symmetry is that ds is going to be parallel to the b field right there. Because we know the B field basically goes around the wire. Okay? Now, if you think back to doing the uh, electric field of a point charge with Gauss's law, we sort of reconfirmed Coulomb's law. And I argued that I actually didn't use Coulomb's law at all. I just used symmetry to say certain things like this. Here, eh, I'm kind of using our result from Bio Savar to say that the B field goes around. You could get into deep symmetry arguments about the fact that the current goes this way, breaks the symmetry, therefore B has to be up or down. I don't want to conf all that confusing stuff. But it is true, though. We know it's OK for the B field to have a value this way because the current direction has broken the symmetry. It's not a charged rod. It's something carrying current in a specific way. Therefore, this way and that way are now different. But anyway, the symmetry of the situation I'm really referring to is the fact that we have a circular Ampere loop around a circular wire, and they share the same axis. So the DS will always be parallel to the B field. Okay. If that's true, then they're parallel. It's just this magnitude times that magnitude. We can write it as the integral around the circle of B ds, where those are just magnitudes. I'm just writing them without the, the vector sign, is mu naught and I, the total current I, goes through the loop. Okay. Symmetry also tells us something else, and that is that the magnitude of B is constant. When we go all the way around the Ampere loop, we're always at the same distance from the wire. There's nothing special about any one of these points relative to any of the other points. So there's no reason that the B should change. It should always be the same. So therefore, the B can come out of the integral. If the B comes out of the integral, we're left with the integral around a loop of ds. Well, like we just talked about, that's the circumference of the loop. So that's 2 pi times r, not a. It's the circumference of the loop. The loop's radius is r. The wire's radius is a. So b times 2 pi r equals mu naught i. Right? So then you're pretty much done. The b field around the wire, its magnitude is mu naught i over 2 pi r, which is the same thing we got 
when we apply the Bios of Arlo. And the direction is that it goes around. Following the right hand rule, if you put your thumb along the current in the wire, your fingers go around the direction of the B field. So that worked for outside the wire. Now let's do inside the wire. Okay, so this little loop inside the wire, I could draw a practice DS on it, like that. And we could say due to symmetry, again, it's also true here, DS is parallel to B. And if there's current going through here, it's going to make a B field going around. It doesn't care if it's inside of metal. It won't shield the B field. Current outside won't make a difference. That's all basically the same. And it's also actually true that B will be constant going around this symmetric circle. There's no reason the B field would change going around that circle. So similar arguments. Then if it's B dot DS, then it turns into B times the integral of DS. Okay. So the parallel part got rid of the dot product. The fact that B is constant brought it out of the integral. So this is looking pretty similar. B equals mu naught, but now is the difference, is the current. The current I, whenever you see current in a wire, you assume it's evenly distributed over the cross-section of the wire. It may not really be, but you assume it is, and usually you'll be told that the current is uniformly distributed through the wire. If that's the case, you have to figure out how much of that current is going through this circle. What fraction? Well, it's just by the area. Right? If, the, if the current is uniformly distributed across the cross-section of the wire, then you just need the fraction of the area that is inside that Ampere loop. So it's just pi r squared over pi a squared. That's the fraction times the total current, i. This is the fraction in the loop. Okay. And then, let's see, so then what do you got here? Then this becomes uh, b times uh, the integral around ds, that's 2 pi r equals here, and then that cancels, and that cancels. It's mu naught i o r squared over a squared. And this is getting a little ugly, sorry. Let's see, if we bring the 2 pi r over here, I think you'll be able to see that in the end, it's mu naught i. And then we have a pi down in the bottom now. We have an r there, because that's r squared gets canceled by that r. And now in the bottom, we have pi a squared. Mu naught IR over, so we have 2 pi A squared, sorry, the 2. 2 pi A squared. So that's the B field inside. Okay. You can kind of plot them. It's common to then look at it and say, oh, what is, how do they go together? Well, the way they go together is if you were to plot the B field versus radius, and you know the wire looked like this, right? So there's the radius of the wire. It would increase linear with radius until you got up to here, right? So it goes, increases linear with radius. And then it would fall as 1 over r when you get out here. So you'll see a plot like this a lot of times. And that's how the magnitude of the B field increases with the radius as you're inside and outside the wire. Another check you can make is your two expressions had better be equal there. Right? The B field can't go through some discontinuity. So at r equals a, sure enough, that becomes uh, uh, r equals a is mu naught i over 2 pi a, and that's mu naught i over 2 pi a. So everything makes sense. That was our first application of Ampere's law to solve for a B field.